today is the day I'm going to replace the rotors and pads and shoes. I've looked at so many YouTube videos on how to do this. I would also like to paint the brake calipers as well. So we've got some brake caliper paint, silicon grease, anti-seize compound, all of the parts ready to go. To remove the front brake calipers, you'll need an 18mm and a 21mm six-point sockets and a breaker bar. To remove the rear wheel, you'll need an 18mm six-point socket and a T55 Torx half-inch socket. And we have on the back here a T55 Torx bit and the caliper bolts are 18mm. First I'm going to take the brake shoes off, but I'm going to try slackening all of the bolts if I can, and just to see if I can, I can move them. I've watched lots of videos on how to release stuck bolts on the calipers. Everything from trolley jacks to tubes to go over your, your wrenches, lots of things like that. But one technique I've just learnt, and that is to take your wrench, and then because of the rear, rear metal, you, you can use a, a hammer or a, another bar to just put some pressure on, on the socket making sure you're holding the socket nice and square. And with doing that technique, I've released all four of these, which I couldn't humanly do. And there's no room to get a breaker bar in here. So this is an easy way using these, these struts here and here to, to form leverage points. You'll find they, they will go. Here's the rear left hand rotor, which interesting is uh, quite loose. We've got a T55 Torx caliper yoke screw there. There's two of those, one, one above, one below down here. And also two caliper bracket bolts, one at the top, one at the bottom. Now this one, when it goes back, will be torqued up to 30 foot pounds and this one will be 40 foot pounds. First, I'm gonna try and do the Torx bolts because I find it easier to get these when the caliper yoke is out of the way. After managing to crack the T55 bolts, I had to put a breaker bar on the back of this one, get the breaker bar in this position here, which when it went, um, there's bound to be a bit of blood somewhere, went really suddenly. The one below, I could press down this way, which managed to get them broken. So those two are free. So we're gonna to continue to take out those bolts and remove the yoke. Both the slide pins are now free. We'll take the one at the bottom, leave it supported. As you can see, this one's pretty dry. There's almost no silicon on there whatsoever. Just put that to one side for a moment. See if we can free the block that's not coming free. So we're just going to get a bit of a tool to prise that free. So I've managed to free up, free that up. We'll just grab hold of that caliber bolt. I managed to, um, without putting too much strain on the brake line, and move the calipers at the back. I will tie that up with a bungee cord just to keep it safe. I've supported the caliper yoke. Now we need to somehow get the pads out and free the caliper bracket. These are the brake pads that came off. As you can see, they're very worn. And just like the right-hand side, this one has got a groove that's where my thumb is running around. So the rest of the pad is worn away and it's very, very uneven wear. And I think that's because the pin is sticking, which means that this inside one is constantly in contact with the rotor. The outside one is very similar, but it's worn. A bit better than the right hand side, but still not good. Now uh, we need to remove the brake caliper itself, which is going to be tough. Opposite to the Right hand side, the breaker bar's got to go up. There's the breaker bar with a socket on there, nice, nicely engaged. I'm attempting another technique using the I'm a jack to put some force on the breaker bar. I just cannot get in, I just cannot break that connector, that socket. So we're just going to keep winding this and find out what happens. Again, I've got the breaker bar underneath the Hummer jack underneath one end. Attach the other end nice and square. I'm just going to try and repeat what we did on the other, on the top bolt. As for the um, top bolt, 
and, and it may be because they were using a jack rather than something that can apply more force as it moves there was no sudden crack this just started to move very slowly and it's a break I can barely do with one with one hand it's really tight all the way so it's going to take me a while to get these out but I'll keep going too too hard to use a, a ratchet at the moment as you can see these are still tough finally the bolts come out and the caliper is off that's the state of the caliper we're going to replace in the caliper retainers that's the word caliper retainers and just note that the retainers on the front are a different size to the retainers on the back They're almost identical but the ones on the front are thicker because the brake pads are, are bigger and it's only just like maybe a millimeters worth of difference so that's really strange why they couldn't make them all the same I don't know would have been so easy probably be a bit of history so let's just see if we can get a try and pull our rotor off it's going to take two hands I think by rocking the rotor backwards and forwards and working it it finally came off the shoes are not that far worn note that the actual assembly is upside down compared to the other side so the cable emergency brake cable comes to the top it's going to be just that bit more tricky I think to get this back together my back plate is a little bit worse for wear but we're going to brush that up and um, repaint it just to give it a bit more a few more years so I think that's a bit tricky to change you can see the inside surface of the calipers is worn as before almost a mirror image carbon copy of the uh, right hand side I'm going to take it all apart clean it all up and refit the shoes and the new rotor probably do what we said to the other side let's clean this this caliber bracket up check everything for the, get the rubber gaiters look okay the retaining clips are well worn so we're going to clean this one up and, and respray it just to do exactly what we did for the other side a little bit of work to do here is my caliper bracket as you can see it's very rusty to be honest for the cost of it it's probably would have been worth just buying two brand new ones we're going to clean it up get all the rust off respray it clean out all the holes get rid of the thread lock <laughs> clean out the guide pin holes get all of the grease out of there all of the burnt silicon and see what it looks like i'm going to replace the brake shoes even though they're not badly worn but to come this far to change the rotors and to not have new brake shoes we've got to set them up maybe adjust the adjuster to get the gap right but it seems a shame to get this far so to get them off i'm going to do a couple of things we're going to take this retaining clip off here which has been match marked to show that it's there and not moved there's one on the other side which is here again that's been match marked and then underneath is the adjuster which you can see just there and the way that I got the other ones off was to spread the the um, shoes apart slide the adjuster out let it drop out and then this spring comes off quite easily and once you've got that off you can then lever the tops off I'm going to try and do this clip on this side one-handed what I do is rotate the clip and then push down on the clip it's hard to, hard to show maybe not quite so much downwards right and push down on the clip gonna have to put the camera down hard to do with one hand so there's a pin that goes through I'm not sure if this is the correct way but you can actually lever the brake pad this way and then the adjust adjusting itself adjuster you can prise that away and then it should slot out and allow the, the springs to come off I think not, somebody may tell me a better way but that's how it seems to work the shoes the brake shoes are not handed okay they are identical 
I've verified that on the new parts. I've got the all the shoes have got the same part number, so there's no other distinguishing features. They look identical, and I believe they are ident identical. Next, I'm going to spray out the um, mechanism with brake cleaner and um, clean up as much as I can inside the brush to um, get rid of all of the debris. I've got a soft bristled brush and I'm just going to spray some brake cleaner around the inside here. I've cleaned it inside, cleaned the spline, made sure there's no debris inside there. Everything moves okay. Everything is nicely cleaned out. All the grease stops pouring out. I think there are some wear points which may need some caliper grease to go on here. A bit of copper slip to go on down here. So there's one, two, three, four, and there's this part here at the back here, which obviously where, as you can see, it's been rubbing. So we put a bit of caliper grease on there. Not too much. We don't want to get it onto the shoes. Just it's not on any rotating part, so shouldn't migrate too much. Everything else is clean. Anyway, we're going to refit the shoes and take it from there. On the uh, right hand side, I measured the adjuster, which if I recall was 52 millimeters. This one's 51. I'm going to leave it set there, as that's a good guide as to the original setting. The old brake calipers were fairly new looking. And assuming that the geometry is similar, on the replacement parts, we're just going to measure the wall thickness. So that was six and a half mil, and on the new ones, six and a half mil. So there's very little wear at all. But we're here now, and we're going to change them. So I'm going to put these back on, put these on. I've fitted the spring in. I'm now going to put these calipers back in, and I'm going to try and show you how to do this. One-handed holding the phone is difficult, but you can see I've started the right-hand side, got the brake adjuster in the slot, and now I'm going to pull this left-hand shoe to get it started. It's hard with one hand. In fact, I'm going to have to put the camera down. I've got the over the edge there. It's got to line up with the rest of the brake adjuster underneath. So I'm just going to concentrate on fitting that. It's going to be a two-hand job. I'll be back in a sec. I'm going to put a little bit of copper slip to um, those surfaces that I pointed out earlier. Just I've a added bit. A little bit of slip to one five point just there. there. The other one there. just you below. Just a smidgen. Which is down be there. Just flying around in there. Hard to get the camera um, to focus. So now I'm Another to area to of where just here. And one more down below. And there was one on the top which I can't do while I'm holding the camera. I'll put some on there too. So the other area was down there, and it's hard to do once you've got the brakes. Pressurised. Maybe I should have done that one first, but I managed to get the brush in between the two, so I think I've got some slip down there. With the aid of a screwdriver just to hold the shoe in place, I've managed to clip the spring on. Now this is the tricky part, is getting the adjuster in and stretching the shoe to fit over. It takes quite some doing, so again I won't be able to video this part. To start the process off, I've put the bottom part of the adjuster in first so we've got to move this shoe upwards to get the top half in it's going to take two hands and a, and a prayer eventually i got the adjuster in it's not that hard there's a the hole for the retaining clip you can use as a lever point against the wheel hub when then you can prise the shoe right out slide this and then easily get the adjuster in so you you're prising the shoe out this way sliding that under the adjuster in there and then the other end gradually pokes in so now we're going to put the retaining clips in and then we're done 
again without a decent head cam it's, what you can do is you can um, it's hard to video I was going to say but you can poke the pin through like that and then I tend to use a pair of long nose pliers to maneuver the clip and push and lock it in place can't do that on video well I've managed to get the clips in which is a, a test um, can't describe how you get them in put them back in the same positions I even got the match marks back so the new shoes are on that's what they look like not entirely satisfied with the position that this one sits in compared to that one I can't see no reason why that shouldn't be higher up. We'll give it a, a poke and see if we can adjust it, but then we're going to try the um, new rotor on. Oh, it's just the natural play in the shoes that was causing that to sit slightly skew with, but everything's back together. The retaining clip's back in. You adjust this back in this roughly the same position. Let's see the other side of it, everything's seated in the slots. So we're going to try the new rotor on and just see how it fits. These are the rear. Um, caliper bracket mounting bolts um, you can see they've had thread lock on them that's all the other stuff I'm going to clean these up these are 18 millimeter um, bolts I'm not quite sure how long they are with a flared nut um, don't have any new ones we lost nice to fit new ones but uh, these will have to do the bolt on the left was uh, the one that's just been cleaned up compared to its companion which is um, still got the thread lock on so we're going to do the same to the other one I've cleaned up the two caliper bolts I've chased the thread round with a sharp knife and then wire brush the threads to make sure all the thread lock is out and these will now should now screw nicely into the caliper bracket I've partly done clean the caliber bracket you can still see the signs of rust on it which I'm going to um, get rid of you can see this one screws in nicely the same as this one this one screws in nicely and they'll go all the way as far as possible it's bad enough trying to tighten these up when they're new uh, it's even harder if they're difficult to get in we can do those now I haven't cleaned cleaned out the bores of these guide pins I, I'm going to do that now I'm going to clean that those those bores out and get rid of all of the debris that's in there I've cleaned the guide pins which look in pretty good state that they're not uh, worn at all and it, there's no play they feel nice they just need greasing properly which I will do soon but before I, I finish painting this caliper bracket before I do that I'm going to put the caliper bracket back in and the calipers on the yoke I'm going to put that back in and I'm going to push the pistons back in using some old brake pads I don't have a caliper tool for this but you can do that for the back brakes at least without any special tools and I'll show you how to do that in a bit I'm going to clean out the guide pin um, on the caliper brackets one of the guide pins and we're going to use a nice clean microfiber cloth and I'm going to clean out the bore and I'm going to show you what the cloth looks like after I take it out I think it's important to make sure you've got all any all and every particle that's of dirt or contamination that's in there out and then at least there's going to be nothing in there no bits of uh, swarf or anything you know rust or anything that's going to bind with the guide pin uh, which could be detrimental. So to do this, I've got some isoprop alcohol, which won't attack the rubber, on the end of a screwdriver, poked into the corner of the rag like that. That will go all the way down to the bottom, and then we can just keep spinning it around until all the com contamination comes out. So I've pushed the rag all the way down to the bottom, right to the end. You can see that's quite a long 
screwdriver can I pull that um, it's a Phillips headed screwdriver thin one and I can just keep turning this around and around and around till every particle comes out you can see when the rag came out it was pretty dirty I'm going to keep going until I've got it all out I've cleaned out the caliper guides I kept going until the rag came out virtually nice and clean uh, so nothing else came out and finally I used a rag with the end of the guide pin just inside the boot just to clean the, the old grease out from inside the boot so the boots are clean and then to complete the exercise um, I just happened to have a spray wash bottle with IPA which I squirted down, down to the bottom of each guide pin and then drained out the final few particles of, of uh, debris that's in there so I'm, they look pretty clean I would say as good as it's going to be let's see if the guide pins but they're obviously a bit rough now because there is no grease on those guide pins at all so but we're going to grease those up as the final in the final phase on to doing the brake pads it's difficult in the sim to show you but the level of my brake reservoir is quite high because i've already pushed uh, one pair of brake pads uh, cylinders at home so you're pushing brake fluid back up into the reservoir so we're going to have to lose some of the brake fluid perhaps using a turkey baster or something to get rid of what's in there because otherwise we're going to, it's going to spill out the top and pour it in the engine compartment which we don't want so it's quite important to check that we've got to do that next not sure if you can see but I've drained about an inch of brake fluid out of the reservoir using a, a clean pipe and a drinks bottle funnily enough that's the exact quantity that we've drained out so this is going to be discarded when that's not going back into the system and there is a, an argument um, for actually draining the fluid at, at, the, at the brake calipers themselves because that gets rid of all of the old overheated brake fluid that's been going towards the calipers but in my case I've literally just changed all of the brake lines in the Hummer which was a difficult job and so this fluid and all of the, the brake fluid is all brand new uh, unfortunately I didn't have the brakes and calipers at the time and the, and the rotors and the pads to change so I've had to do this at a slightly later date this is brand new brake fluid all the way through the system so this will be good enough I've refitted the brake caliper and the yoke with the pistons in there and I've slid in a couple of the old brake pads. Now there's a slot on the side here and you can use the Hummer's lug nut tool to actually push the calipers back against the cylinders. I've just got to tighten up the guide pin bolts just to stop it flailing about but that should push the cylinders back in. I've refitted the brake caliper, the yoke I've only just nipped up the bolts, no need to torque them up or anything. I've put a, both the old brake pads in there because um, we're going to be levering against the brake lining surface, which doesn't matter because these are going to be thrown away anyway. There's a gap in here. You can see my finger in the light down there. So we're going to put the lug wrench that comes in the comma kit through the hole in here, lever against that brake pad and push the cylinders in. It takes quite a bit of effort to do. It's not ideal but it does work and once they've gone in a bit you can use the second pad and it's best to brace the, the caliper brackets so you don't bend the guide pin so I'm going to do that off camera. Well the cylinders have now been pushed back. I've got one at the bottom that needs a little bit more to do maybe but when you're pulling on the lever it's best just to, just to put a bit of a a block on there just stop bending the guide pins a bit it's um, they're pretty strong so I, I don't think there's any chance that you're going to bend them both brake cylinders have been pushed back as far as they'll go as I say when you're using the brake pads and levering with this tool you can just brace this area just to stop a bit of just fight against this rather than against the um, caliper pins so I don't think there's any chance you're going to bend them but uh, you don't want to go mad so they're pushed back. I wanted to do this now because when I've repaired all of this and resprayed the back and sprayed the brake calipers, you don't want to be levering and chipping the paint off. 
I'll do this now before we put the calipers back together. And by way of comparison, you can see that the fluid has now gone up about three eighths of an inch. There's probably room to get a, the uh, front two cylinders done. The right hand rear brake has already been done. Um, this one's just been done. You can see our reservoir has gone up. And it will go down a little bit when, when we finally put pressure on the uh, foot pedal and operate the disc brakes. I've taped over the rubber gaiters. Two reasons. One, to stop the dust getting down the hole, which uh, would not be good. And also it gives some protection just in case we should catch it with the tools that we're going to use to take the rust off. Here's my left hand side rear caliper bracket. As you can see, I've pretty much got off all of the bubbles of rust. It's taken a lot of effort. It's probably took two days to, to, to get it this far. I'm not going any further. I think I've gone far enough. I'm just going to take these up, take the uh, rubber gaiters up, fill the holes, and then take it for spraying. I'm going to give it three coats of caliper paint. I'm going to allow 10 minutes between each coat to dry and then uh, leave it for a good hour before I actually uh, put it on the vehicle. The caliper bracket has been cleaned. It's been uh, wiped down with isopropyl alcohol and all the holes plugged. That's the uh, two mounting bolts and the rubber gaiters for the uh, caliper pins have been taped over. So it's perfectly clean. It's now going to have three coats of black caliper paint. I made a plastic shield wrapped around the brake shoes just to provide something to stop the debris getting in my nice new brake shoes and clean brake shoe area whilst I sand this down and respray it. Here we go. I've cleaned the back plate as much as I can. <laughs> this plate is on its last legs. Really, it should have been replaced. Um, I, I was kind of talked out of doing it because of the work involved in changing the plate, but I think that will be another job on the list. As you can see, there's a few holes, but I've got most of the rust off. I'm not going to go too mad, otherwise there'll be nothing left of the plate to spray. So I'm go just going to spray that to tidy it up. We'll call that a job done. According to the General Motors Maintenance Manual, the procedure for adjusting the brake shoes is as follows. You take the tool, which is J21177, and measure the inside diameter of the brake rotor. You then measure the brake shoes at what they say is the widest point, and then adjust the brake adjuster until you get a clearance of 0.6604 millimeters or 0 0.026 inches between the shoes and the rotor. So here's the sprayed and dried caliper bracket. Looks pretty good, despite all of the rough grinding and sanding and filing and everything. You would hardly know the difference by the time the paint's dried. I mean, this is never going to be a showpiece bracket. I've removed all of the filler from the holes. I've tried the screws in. They fit nicely, no problem. They, they wind in all the way. At the moment the back plate for the wheel is drying the pins the holes are tight because there's no grease on the thing but they'll they will be greased that one's not well tight it's just dry they're dry we're going to try the calipers clips in and the brake pads to make sure they're all free to move now the only problem that i've had with the previous one is putting too much paint around the brackets uh, pushes them out and tightens the gap up but uh, I was careful not to spray too much around there this time so just enough to coat them and we'll see how we get on this is the right rear rotor it's got the R on there and notice that the grooves sweep spiral as if to wipe things out as they go this way rather than fighting the travel they're going with the direction is in that way so I'm going to clean the rotor with brake cleaner 
because sometimes they coat surfaces with a bit of oil to protect them in transit so we're going to do this side turn it over do the inside and the outside ready to fit so I've just done this one side you can see the oil coming off I'll keep going until I get no oil and then I'll do the, ins the inside edge and the, and the uh, drum I've checked that the pads slide nicely on the um, caliper guide clips I put some anti-seize on the clips for the uh, pads to slide on and we've torqued up the the back two, two caliper bolts to 40 foot pounds we're now ready to put the caliper back together I believe the pad with the wear indicator goes on the back pretty sure that's the case there is not a wear indicator on the front and when I took the pads off the old two the one on the back had one and the one on the front had two there's a bit of a mismatch and by the time it gets to the to the wear indicators it's pretty bad news anyway so we're going to paint some anti-seize on the on the back of the pads where they press we'll just cover them in an, in uh, anti-seize I've generously lubricated the guide pin with the correct silicon grease and I've put some uh, thread lock on the thread just before I tighten it up. I'll do the same to the bottom and then we'll tighten them up. The left rear wheel has been done, bolts have been torqued up. We'll wipe off any surplus anti seize and call it a day. This is the completed right hand front brake assembly. I, I painted the caliper, not the yoke. Caliper bolts were done to 40 foot pounds. The yoke was done to 30 foot pounds. The pads have got little anti squeal. They go over the piston. I did put some uh, anti seize on those and on the piston, and I cleaned the pistons so they were nice and flat with no rust on there. And they were a bit grotty. Greased the guide pins, cleaned down the rotor, but it was clean anyway. Uh, I think on the plain metal ones they do put an oily coating but they don't tend to put it on these so now we're just going to put the road wheel back on and we'll do the other side tomorrow turn the wheel through maximum lock so we can gain access to the caliper bolts there's two sizes 21 millimeter for the main caliper bracket and 18 millimeter for the caliper yoke so let's start off by removing the caliper yoke the top two bolts are quite inaccessible. I can't get an impact driver in there, so I'm using a breaker bar to try and break the thread. In the past, this has proven quite difficult, so we'll see how we get on. This top caliper bolt <laughs> proved very difficult to undo. I've got a breaker bar with an extension with the wheel at maximum lock and also to stop the wheel from rotating as you're trying to pull because you, you can't get in because the bodywork here you're naturally tending to turn the uh, the wheel hub so to stop that from happening I had to tie this wheel to the bodywork just to stop it from turning unfortunately I don't have a spare pair of hands to help me so um, that's how we did it I also had to undo the brake clamp the brake line clamp um, so that I didn't put any strain on the um, brake hose I've now managed to move it as you can see it will turn albeit it's going to be a long process getting that unwound still hard to turn just a way as a way of a demonstration I have an impact driver which is quite a good one mains powered not air powered but having no effect finally we've got the bolt slackened off the top bolt was a breaker bar all virtually all the way out till I could eventually use a wrench a ratchet wrench to um, to get to it but uh, it was put up a fight all the way so anyway now it's it's out all the bolts are loose so now we can carry on this is taking the best part of a, an hour and a half. The um, guide pins have been loosened off, so I can take those out. 
which now leaves the yoke to come loose and I think it should just with a little bit of leverage top and bottom just come out I think this bracket is now loose loose enough to, to come free I'm going to use two hands I don't want to drop this I don't want to put any less free so we can now rotate that around and tie that up somewhere on the top um, one of, what I must remember is that before we put this back together is to clean these threads out on the on the yoke because although I'm going to scrape the thread lock out of these bolts and clean these bolts up if you don't do the 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 other mating half of the thread you'll find that they can be hard to get back in which is not ideal you want them really to be able to put them in up to hand tight so that you, you know you've got the bolt um, nicely mated with a hole so the last one I did one of one of the one of the threads was a little bit tight um, it was okay but not as it should be so now I'm going to remove the caliper bracket um, completely and then take the rotor off then put the caliper bracket back on with the yoke so that we can actually put the pistons back into the um, fully retracted position so we can get the brake pads in and also check at the same time that the brake reservoir is not overflowing with brake fluid so uh, we'll get onto this stage next I've undone the two caliper bolts so these now, now come out they're going to be cleaned up as well later this should now drop off there we go it dropped clean off and the rotor fortunately is loose now inspecting the expecting the bracket uh, there is some rust on this but not as bad as the other side was we're going to put it through the workshop clean it all up respray it and then um, put it all back together the brake rotor is coming off slowly 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 oh my fingers there we go just need to make sure next time that we clean this base plate up on here as well just so that uh, there's no dirt or anything on there we'll give it a spray with brake clean the back plate on this one is not so bad as the other side so won't have to do that quite probably we also need to make sure these surfaces are clean here and here so I've got the old brake pad in there which is going to be scrapped anyway and now I'm going to use the I'm a tire lever to push that brake pad back like that but to do that I'm going to support the, the yoke so we're not putting too much strain on the guide pins we don't want to bend those it takes quite a lot of effort so I'm gonna to have to do this off camera the experienced ones amongst you may say why didn't you use a g-clamp with the brake pad on there or why didn't they have a caliper tool well, the answer is not obvious. We're on COVID-19 shutdown here in the UK. We can't go out. We can't get, there's no hardware stores open. We can't go and buy what we need. We are literally stuck here. Unfortunately, this is the hand we've been given and I've been forced to improvise with whatever's to hand. I have a lot of tools, but not never enough tools. Anyway, I've managed to get the cylinders retracted as far as I can physically get them they look pretty pretty good to me within a millimeter they, they don't seem to want to go anymore so I'm happy that they are home I will clean these up before we put the little brake anti-squeal discs in we will we'll cover them with anti-seize just to make sure but that's the caliper prepared ready and I just got to uh, take off the bracket and work on that which is not something I'm looking forward to but we've got to be we've got to do it I've cleaned the hub up, wire brushed it, sprayed it with brake clean, cleaned the mounting surfaces here. I've also cleaned, very difficult to see, but I've cleaned the tops of the pistons, ready for the brake, anti-squeal anti rings that sit on top of those. I've tried the guide pins in to the um, yoke bracket, they fit nicely, everything else should be okay. So we're just waiting for the paint to dry. In the meantime, 
I'm going to put the new rotor on. I'm going to clean it up first and then mount that on there ready. When fitting the caliper brackets, note they are handed. There's a thin and a narrow and a wide part that mate into the equivalent side. So that's this side and that's this side here. That's that one fitted. And that's that one fitted. Now it remains to see if the actual brake pads fit in and slide slide in. In case I've added too much paint, it could be a problem. I'm just gonna try this. Come on. Yeah, may have to take a little bit of paint off there. The brake pads are free to slide up and down and no problem at all. So this is now ready to fit. So there's the completed left front wheel. Nice painted calibre bracket. Didn't bother painting the yoke because it's too much effort to do that. Guide pins have all been greased up with silicon grease. Torqued to 30 foot pounds. Sorry, the guide pins are 30 foot pounds. The caliper brackets are 40 foot pounds. All that remains now is to put the road wheel on and just double check everything.